I'm leaving the Tonight Show. There must be a better way of uh, making a living than this. You have been peachy to me always. It was uh, making a very mild joke uh, on the on, on the uh, confusion between Water Closet uh, W.C. Wayfair Chapel W.C. So you can see the opportunity to make kind of snide little jokes. It was a harmless joke. As you, everyone knows now, it was a mistake. They never should have cut it. Did they have the right to cut it? Oh, absolutely. We edited things every night. But what they did, or this idiot executive did, they put in a news uh, broadcast. Well, it alerted the entire country that something happened, as it never had happened before. And so th that's what I was upset about, because I knew it was not obscene, but that's how the word spread. Every paper in the country, obscene, front page, obscene, obscene. Now, I had a daughter in a very good school up here in, in uh, Westchester, and I don't want my daughter to have to walk around and kids talk about uh, uh, obscenities. So I called Mr. Kittner, as he's the president of NBC. He said, Jack, it's, it's not obscene. I said, I'll tell you what, if you don't think it's obscene, then tonight, that's the next night, I want to run that and that will stop it. They'll see what it was and then there'll be no more talk. At six, he called and said, Jack, I can't do it. I can't let you do it. It looks like you're running the corporation. He said, it was a corporate decision and it looks now like you can change a corporate decision. I don't want you to run it. And I said, Mr. Kintner, that's unacceptable to me. It's not fair. And uh, I have a surprise for you. That night, we did the show. We started the show. Jack came out and, uh, and talked for about two or three minutes and said, I'm leaving The Tonight Show. <laughs> well, there's this gasp in the audience. I'm sure a gasp all around uh, America. I thought it was the end of my career. I had made the, this was the only thing I'd done that really was successful and really had a future. And maybe I could make some money this time. And uh, I, you want to know what I felt? I felt that that was the end. That was it. I'd have to do something else. Maybe go back to some small station and be a disc jockey or something. Here they have a show, uh, the, their hottest show, their money maker, their bottom line. Uh, the, the guy who was in charge of it, Jack Parr, has just left. Two days later, I believe it was, I was out on this veranda wondering, what the hell am I going to do now? Where am I going to go? What can I do? And I saw a big, a big uh, limousine driving down at this dusty road. And as I looked, I thought, God, it's the press. I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm not going to say a word. So I began to run. And two men got out of the car and ran after me. I thought it was the press. It was Bob Kittner and Bob Sarnoff. They had flown down, and they chased me, and we went into an empty uh, motel room. And I, we, we, had, we, we, we negotiated this on the bed, uh, uh, this little dinky place. The newspaper headlines uh, were full of the story. Uh, newspapers were full of the story for uh, a couple of weeks. And then when Jack came back, I think it was the biggest audience we had. One, here's Jack! As I was saying before I was interrupted. <laughs> I believe my last words were that there must be a better way of making a living than this. Well, I have looked. <laughs> Thank you.
and there isn't. 